If I'm 100% honest with you, I have changed too many Joy-Con thumbsticks in this household. We each have a Switch in the household and almost every single Joy-Con that we've purchased has drifted at one point or another. Yes, technically I know that I could ship it to Nintendo and Nintendo will go ahead and fix it and then ship it back and all this and that, but I'm impatient. I would rather just order it from Amazon, order some replacements, have them come in and me change the thumbsticks myself. I'm not afraid of opening up my Joy-Con, so to speak. But Goldie Kit went ahead and came out with Joy-Con joystick replacements that have hall sensing technology built into it. Guys, this is extremely exciting because technically that means that I never have to worry about drift in the future. And neither do you if you go ahead and decide to buy this yourself. Now, technically it's a little bit more expensive than it would be for regular Joy-Con replacements that you would get from Amazon instead of the 10 to $15 range, you're gonna be close to the $30 range depending on where you get them. When they were first released online, I wasn't able to get a pair for myself, but after a little bit of digging, I found a third-party reseller that went ahead and sold these along with a couple of other things. Now, when I first got this after buying it, I quickly went ahead and unboxed it and I did a YouTube short talking a little bit about why this is such a big deal for me personally and why it's worth it for anyone that is interested in actually getting this for themselves. As you can see, it comes with a screwdriver as well as some tongs and a tri-wing screwdriver to kind of go ahead and pry open the Joy-Con itself. There's a couple of extra things in there and of course the hall sensing joysticks for the Joy-Cons themselves. The cool thing about hall sensing joysticks is that you don't have to worry about them degrading over a long period of time. See, regular joysticks, the ones that come in your Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, those degrade over a long period of time because there are metal prongs in the joysticks themselves that go ahead and make contact with the carbon pad and that carbon pad, as as those metal prongs move around, they degrade. Technically, you could put in a piece of cardboard that'll go ahead and apply pressure onto the bottom of the actual joystick itself and kind of go ahead and reconnect what exactly was missing and then it'll go ahead and start making contact again. But even still, that is still going to degrade. It's just the way that nature works. And there's going to be debris and all sorts of things that build up in that little compartment that'll go ahead and affect the signal that your joystick is sending to the Nintendo Switch. With hall sensing technology, you're not going to have to worry about that because it's all magnets that are moving around without actually making contact on anything. It's all being detected onto where it is in its X and Y axis. It's pretty cool because since there isn't any actual contact that's happening in the joystick itself, it technically can't degrade unless it's aging or getting wet or I don't know, some other external factor that's happening. But yes, technically magnets could degrade over a long period of time, but I doubt that you'll be gaming on your Nintendo Switch when those actual magnets wear down. I'm actually going to be replacing my son's Joy-Con thumbsticks because he just plays the Nintendo Switch way more than I do. And I just think that he beats it up a little bit more than I do. So I figured it would be a good thing to give it to him and then I'll order myself some later on down the line. If this is your first time prying open a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con, here's a couple of pieces of advice that I would recommend. First and foremost, make sure that you have some form of anti-static protection of some kind. There's wristbands that are available for people that work on PCs. A very easy thing to do would be to literally touch a PC because it's grounded and that way you can kind of get rid of the static charge that's within your body. But for the most part, you also want to work in a well-lit area, a place with plenty of light, maybe next to a window or next to a lamp. And also you want to have a canister or a bowl or something on the side that would actually let you put all of your loose screws that you're taking out of the Joy-Con into there. That way you can keep track of it and keep things nice and organized. Also, as you're taking apart your Joy-Con, you want to be very careful with the ribbon wires that are there. It's just something that is very delicate and can crack or break very easily. For the most part, there's a little bit of tension that it can take, but you still want to be very, very careful with these. Personally, one of the first things that I like to do is actually remove the battery because I don't want to have any sort of accidental shock or charge go through the PCB and fry everything that's on there. After unscrewing everything and finally getting to the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con joystick, it's actually relatively easy to replace the old one with the new one. All you have to do is take out the old one, make sure that the ribbon wire is actually disconnected as well. Then place the new one in, connect the ribbon wire of the new one to the PCB. And then from there, you just essentially screw everything back in as it was before. Make sure that everything is connected. Personally, before I even close the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con shell, I like to connect the battery and make sure that it's actually working and that the joystick itself is responsive with the Nintendo Switch and that there's actually a signal going out. I did do a calibration test just to make sure that everything was calibrated properly and 
unsurprising to me, there was some form of calibration that needed to happen. This is totally normal whenever you're actually changing the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con joysticks. This is just something that happens with each and every single one, but calibrating it was relatively easy. And once that was said and done, I went and booted up Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because that's what I'm playing right now. And when it got into the game, it was the slightest touch that went ahead and moved our main character. From there, I went ahead and booted up Animal Crossing New Horizons because this is another game where minute movements make some form of a big impact, especially whenever you're hunting bugs or trying to catch them. So these two in-game tests made me confident that yes, everything was working properly as it should. I also wanted to test how this actually compared to the regular Nintendo Switch Joy-Con that came with my OLED and to see whether or not even the slightest movement made some form of an impact. Unsurprisingly, it's actually almost entirely on par in terms of the delicacy and how sensitive the actual detection of movement are between these two different joysticks. One thing that I did notice after actually installing the joystick is that there is a little tiny bit of a hole at the top of the joystick itself. I don't know if this is a design flaw or if this is something that they were aware of, or maybe this is just, I don't know, a mishap for the unit that I got myself. It's just a little odd because in comparison to the regular analog joystick, joystick that comes with the Nintendo Switch, you don't really see anything like that at all anywhere. Also, I will say that the joystick feels a little bit tougher. It feels like you need to put a little tiny bit more force to actually move the analog stick in comparison to the regular joysticks that are there. So I don't know if this is just something that, I don't know, is just my unit in comparison to everything else, but it's definitely something that should be taken into account if you're considering getting this yourself. Personally, I don't mind spending the extra $30 to ensure that I never have to worry about Joy-Con drift again. And I know that $30 is a lot to ask for for some people, but if you're going to open up the Nintendo Switch Joy-Con as is to either switch it out for another joystick or to put in a piece of cardboard to pretty much put a Band-Aid over it because those carbon pads are going to pretty much disappear anyways through usage, why not just go ahead and switch it out and fix it and actually make sure that it's a permanent fix. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything. And if you have any tips, tricks, or pieces of advice, let us know in the comments. If you want to go ahead and hear my thoughts on other controllers that have hall sensing technology, then here's my review of the 8-Bit Do Ultimate Bluetooth controller. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the Gully Kid King Kong 2 Pro controller, then check this out. Until next time, guys, I will see you on the next one. Peace.